Hey, Sean McElroy here again with another one of our AutoLine exclusives. Joining me today is Brian Popsy, the Business Development Manager for Magna Rahini Automotive. Brian, thanks for joining me today. Really appreciate it. Sean, thanks again for this opportunity. You know, it's, it's been great watching your productions over the years and really pleased to be a part of it now. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Thank you, Brian. And Magna Rohini, you guys are working on flexible LED lighting, is that right? And we're not talking about uh, flexible and the amount of applications it can be applied to, although in this case it does apply, but we're talking about really like flexible lighting that you can bend and move, right? Absolutely. And that's really where we get our trade name is, is Flexform that we use for these ultra thin mini and micro LED lighting solutions. So they're brighter, they're lighter. They're more energy efficient than alternate technologies that are out there, including OLED, which it gets measured against often. So when we talk about miniature lighting, we are talking miniature. These things are quite small, right? Correct. And, and really, size is just one of the differences. So the types of LEDs are the mini and micro size. So they're really hard to see if you were just to look at one of them. But when they're put together and populated on a circuit substrate, you get this really tight matrix of light. So this opens up a lot of design freedom and the ability to have product differentiation in lighting. It's really game changing in lighting. And not only that, lighting can also add a premium feel to a car. You know, I feel like when LEDs first kind of came out, it almost looked a little pixelated at times. And the more uniform you could make that look, almost the more premium your car immediately felt. That's exactly it. That's kind of that emotional response to how people judge lighting sometimes because, you know, that you get this the term that the industry calls hot spots sometimes, which really aren't desired when you're looking at a, a lighting module. You want to see a real homogeneous, smooth look. You'll see those executions nowadays on the rear combination lamps of some, uh, you know, the tail lamps of some uh, premium type vehicles. It has that really, you know, deep red, real smooth across the whole surface and then even dynamic application for like turn signals and such, you'll see that sweeping smooth motion. Yeah, and are these like the traditional LEDs that you know most of us might be used to just on a much smaller scale? Well, size is one difference, but but the whole performance of the of the flex form lights go beyond the traditional LEDs, you know, again, giving you that smooth uniform appearance, but its ability to place them you know, really precisely and close together on these different substrates, which we can talk about. That's what makes Flexform so unique. So is it then, is it the combination of the size and the substrates that allow this flexing? Yes. I mean, there's, there's also, um, you know, considerations with different size, small packages and colors. So um, there's a lot you can do with it. You know, we, we provide the the lighting design engineers and designers, kind of this toolbox they can pick from. So substrates, yep, you have traditional, you know, rigid circuit boards, but you also have these different type of film materials like polyimide and polyester. And we're even keeping in scope the ability to use glass, you know, coming up in, in the near uh, future to do that. So that really opens up, you know, between that and the colors and the different performances of these, of these LED, small LED dye, it, it offers, you know, quite a bit of uh, flexibility, I guess, quite a bit of possibility to the design community. So I guess my question that I've always kind of wondered about this, how far can you flex and how the heck aren't you breaking anything? You're not breaking diodes or connections to them. <laughs> Everything has its limits, though. But, you know, we, we've sure. been doing some, some tests here um, with different applications. So you have, obviously... Uh, lights that will curve from the back of the vehicle to along the side of the vehicle. So, you know, as long as it's not a complex shape, you know, we're, we've done really well in some of these mock-ups to do that. You know, we have uh, we have guidelines that we can provide the, you know, the engineering community with, you know, how much it can be. But, uh, but yeah, it, it, it really is a huge advantage to be able to take something that was normally a flat kind of almost screen appearance and be able to put you know, curvature to it. Well, you know, we've talked about this a little bit more. You talked about the different substrates that you can use on this. So I got to imagine that there is just a wide application for something like this. 
Oh, uh, there, there's there's many applications, both exterior and interior to the vehicle. Um, on the exterior side, you know, we're making a, a leap of performance and capability as far as uh, I'll give you an example, like the rear combination lamps. You know, making those all um, appear very smooth, um, kind of exotic looking, and uh, homogeneous across the surface, but again, also being able to put some dynamic motion into those lights. And before, you know, in, in days past, they were just incandescent bulbs that just turned on and off. And this takes it to a whole new level. And then when you think of the front of the vehicle, you could take something like fog lamps and turn them into a dual function where, yes, on a foggy, you know, night, you want, you want those to perform as fog lamps, but in other, in other uh, applications, you could have the front of that module, fog lamp module, actually show symbols or text to communicate with pedestrians. So it could actually create, you know, new applications out of what were considered, you know, very mature applications like a fog lamp. So it opens up a lot of possibilities. And then you could take that fog lamp or that, uh, <clears throat> or that front of the vehicle even into a larger scope and say, the whole grill could be lit up. I'm thinking of like an electric vehicle where you no longer need the, the venting holes in there. You could have that as a canvas and have, you know, some type of, of design or, you know, the badge lit up, uh, uh, an OEM's brand badge, and then shift away from that into communication with pedestrians, you know, as we get into more autonomous type uh, applications, right? The pedestrians really not going to be looking at the driver eyes you know, communicating and autonomous, they'll look at the front of the vehicle. So this lends itself well to that. Yeah, I got to imagine that designers are loving you guys for this sort of thing. Um, one of the things we always see in our comments section is people talking about how all vehicles are starting to look the same. And I, I mean, if you can make a dynamic rear tail light or some action on the front grill or something like that, what a great way for a company to differentiate themselves from someone else. That's exactly right, because, you know, light is something that's that's emotional. You know, um, it's intuitive. To some people, they, they have, you know, um, surprise and delight kind of lighting things in their homes now. Right. So as you're in this third living space in your vehicle, you want and I'm talking about the inside now. You, know, you want that to give you as much comfort with possibly mood, mood lighting or or uh, even signaling, we could have this type of lighting embedded into a pillars to alert the driver of some pending danger. So really there's a lot of different functions this lighting could do. And do I also have it correct that this could be maybe incorporated into like fabric type materials, like almost something where you could display a logo or symbol on a seat? Absolutely, and that's one of the ideas right there that are being worked on right now is taking some take an area that wouldn't traditionally be lit up, but things like fabrics and some of these premium materials, you know, they cost a lot of money to to include them in a vehicle, right? Why not enjoy them in a different way, you know, uh, in the dark rather than just, you know, seeing them by light. And as you said, they can end up, you know, communicating a brand or or a message. So yeah, I guess, you know, the sky's the limit with the kind of innovation that, you know, that this uh, brings to forth. Yeah, it's just quite amazing all the different types of applications that you can have for it. And one other thing that I think is kind of cool is that kids think it's cool. I mean, being able to see light flex like that has got to be a total trip for someone like that. Exactly. You know, it, it's unexpected. I think there's, you know, people like me that have are around from the days when, you know, the interior lighting of a vehicle was a bulb behind a lens up on the on the headliner, and, and that was it. And now you're talking about, you know, specialty lighting to light up a certain zone, let's say, of the interior, right? Or to light up a console so you can see all the different features and find the cup holder. And, you know, so much has changed over the years. And I think the consumers want this. They're, 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 they're willing to... Uh, you know, to spend for it and, and, and it is differentiating and they're going to choose that next vehicle based on how they feel spending all that time in the vehicle. You know, and I don't just say kids think it's cool just to, you know, tout the system anymore. I mean it in the sense that we need to get more kids interested in this industry. Uh, it's a 
problem across the whole industry where there's a shortage of young talent coming in. And anything that can grab someone's interest when they're a young kid, I think is just kind of awesome. Absolutely. I'm right with you. And, and I think the automakers over the last few years have caught up with respect to the displays and the interactive, you know, center stack displays and that. And I know, I know my kids personally, you know, they're, they're happy that that technology is there because they're used to it with their handheld devices. And now that it's in vehicles, you're right. You know, it gets them enthused about vehicle technology and actually wanting to own a car. So I guess the ultimate question I have for you, Brian, is when do we see this? When do we see some of this, you know, moving active uh, logos going across a grill or, you know, some of the the really cool applications for it? When are we going to start seeing this out uh, uh, in cars? And I think it's going to, you know, kind of roll out in, in phases of different applications. So we've been bringing awareness and demonstrating the technology to the OEMs and the tiers over the past 18 months that Magna Rohini's been been in existence. And we have a few projects in the design and, and quote phase right now. So we don't have anything currently in mass production. We're actually working on some non-auto transportation applications with shorter lead times. So I think you're going to see a couple things in 2021. But as far as the automotive market, it's likely more 2023. And as you know, you know, as something gets out there, more more uh, OEMs and more consumers want it, and so that'll that'll kind of prime the pump for growth. Yeah, no, it's definitely a cool way that someone could personalize their car, have some more safety added to it, just a, a lot of different flexibility with it. So I thought this, if I can add this in, just a fantastic fit for Magna. Ma Magna having you know the the lighting business, right, of making all the the exterior lighting. It's it's very unique that we're not part of Magna Lighting. We're part of Magna Electronics, but you know we can bring this type of technology to help grow their business. So I think you know Magna is able to uh, to reap, I guess, the benefits of of having this all in house. Yet we're still able to sell this lighting technology to non-magna lighting entities out there as well. Yeah, it just makes the company stronger when you can kind of cross-pollinate like that and bounce off of each other. Exactly. But Brian Popsy, I want to thank you so much for telling us all about your FlexForm LED lighting technology. Really cool stuff. Can't wait to see it in cars. Sean, thanks again. Well, you're now on the on the forefront of knowing what to expect coming out. So I appreciate you you know, giving us time here to talk about it. And it's very exciting and we can't wait as well. No problem, thank you. Thank you.